Well, that went way better than I thought. Hey everyone, welcome back to Andrew's Wizardly Reads, and as always, I'm Andrew. Today, guys, I've got another top 10 video here for you, but before we get to that video, make sure you are liking and subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you can get regular updates when I put out new content. I post every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Well, that said, guys, this is my top 10 Q2 list of books that I just absolutely loved, and uh, yeah, I am actually kind of surprised by this list because... I didn't know I'd gone full five-star strumpet. Guys, I went full five-star strumpet. Uh, <laughs> like, it, to the point where, like, I actually have two honorable mentions because I needed four stars <laughs> on, on on my recommendations here. I'm I'm stunned, guys. I'm absolutely stunned with what I, I read because I, apparently I loved everything I read. Now, let's get right on into it. This is across just multiple forms of media guys uh so yeah it it's 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 wild so i've got the first four here i've gotten physical copy the rest are on either audio or ebook but let's start off with um two side by side in a series oh don't don't bend the cover andrew don't do that and that's going to be men at arms and feet of clay both Discworld books in the City Watch. I really, really loved what these books did after building on top of Guards Guards. Guards Guards was just a very solid fantasy story with great characters and great build up and just, oh, the humor and everything. We get new characters in each one of these with a lot of returning characters. And now we start addressing social issues. We start addressing racism. And then we start in here, we start addressing what it means to be alive and slavery and things of that nature. So both fantastic books like just, uh, I wish I could be a Terry Pratchett sandwich. I'm, uh, I absolutely love everything that he has done here so far. I am rolling right on through this month with Jingo and I would not be surprised if they both end up five stars because that's what I rated these. So with those two out of the way, the next one was is going to be Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. I did give this one five stars. And I, it, this was my first time ever reading Jurassic Park this month. The review should either be out... Well, I've got the review recorded. I just got to get it up and scheduled and edited and all that nonsense. But Jurassic Park was such a delight. It was a lot darker than the movie was. And just there was so much... Not really different. Basically, the movie had better characters. This has a better story, I think. It was it was just so fascinating after growing up with the movie to really get that contrast of just the book and how the characters are different and the world is different and the science is more in depth here. And you just get you get a lot more bang for your buck here in the book version of Jurassic Park. I am super, super happy that we decided to read this as the channel read along over on the Wizardly Duo Discord. Um, last month? Last month, yeah. Last month. It was it was a fantastic time. Uh, I didn't get to it until about mid-month, so by the time I got to it, most of the conversation was over. But that just means I had people who could explain things to me as I was reading it. Don't mind. Uh, the next one is a grudging five-star read for me because I didn't really love the first two in this. I mean, don't get me wrong, Mad Ship's a good book, and so is Ship of Magic. Those were both four out of five stars for me, but this was a five out of five. Uh, the, the payoff here at the end of Ship of Destiny is fantastic, and it, it all just, it, you, you feel like you're reading a fantasy, an epic, epic fantasy tale. Just the way that Robin Hobb was able to pull all those threads together and get those characters where they needed to be to get the result that we got here is, oh, chef's kiss, super good. Mwah! I loved Ship of Destiny, and frankly, I, I enjoyed the um, live ship traders. Not as much as Farseer, though. Farseer was fantastic. This was really, really good, though. Uh, moving right along, that is the end of the physical copies that I owned. Now I've got, let's see, ebook. Ebook, the, the first one I've got to talk about 
was just, it was a life-changing, mind-blowing book. Actually, I've got two of those in the last three months. And the first one is going to be Aching God by Mike Schell, which is book one in the Iconoclast trilogy. And it was just so, so good. Uh, I've not really read anything like this before. It was basically like fantasy horror with a little bit of grimdark. Just kind of sprinkled on in there. Uh, it was, uh, it, I've never read anything like this. I do have a review for this. I'll go ahead and link that up on the cards. And I'll, I'll probably do the same with Jurassic World. Anything that I have a review out for will be up in the cards when I'm talking about that book. So you can go and click on it. I have done a review for Aching God. It was a buddy read with somebody in uh, the Discord. And it was just, it was fantastic. The way that the horror is delivered in the nightmare sequences is just, oh, chef's kiss so good. Because then, like, he has the nightmare. He wakes up. And the world is still really messed up. But, like, he hasn't gotten... He, he's slowly dreading going back to what caused his nightmare. And I just... I absolutely loved that aspect. Next one I've got... Uh, if I could have included every one of these books, uh, I probably would have. Um, but I didn't want to, like, flood this list with just series. But uh, if I had to say a series, it would be Of Gods and Powder by Brian McClellan, which was just so freaking good. Uh... <laughs> It, those three books are three to four times better than the original trilogy. In fact, if you don't like the first trilogy and you DNF it and don't want to read it, that's fine. You can read the second trilogy. Um, just know that if you ever do get that itch, you'll be spoiled for the first trilogy. But what Brian McClellan did with the second trilogy, is specifically with Blood of Empire, the last book in Of Gods and Powder, was just great. I mean, I, I, got, the, I got the ending that the story deserved. Not the ending I may have wanted. And in fact, that's kind of like dangled in front of you where like, hey, you could have this ending or you could do the right thing. And a lot of the characters do the right thing, which was just fascinating. And the character growth between all three books of Mad Ben Stike, who I think is now one of my favorite fantasy characters of all time. It just from where he started as a brutish prison thug to where he ends up is just, ah, oh, so freaking good. I, uh, man, I, I actually kind of want to already reread this series. So if you're thinking about, if you've read Powder Mage and you're thinking about uh, moving on to Of Gods and Powder or you've been putting it off and kicking it down, stop, read it. it it's, it's just fantastic. Let's see, I've got Nightfall by Daniel Barnett. This is a, the second one. That just blew my mind and changed everything for me. So I am getting ready to read the third book or the third book slash novella here soon. And I'm super excited to get into that. But uh, Nightmare Land is just, it's another horror book, which uh, I, I'm reading more and more horror aspects in my books. And I don't know where this is coming from, but I'm absolutely loving it. And it is all Leslie's fault. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But that said, uh, it is fantastic. I've, again, I've got another review for that, which will be up in the cards. But uh, what what Mike or what Daniel here has accomplished is just fascinating because it's only like a three to four hour read um, if you're going at a leisurely pace. And just the characters are so compelling. The relationship is believable. And it's just the, the crazy stuff that happens in this book the absolutely just shocking moments. And uh, I, I don't even want to really talk to you about it because I want you to experience it yourself. Uh, so far, almost everything's been five star here. My uh, only, I think the only one I've got on here that's a four and a half star is one that I just finished uh, two or three days ago. And that's going to be Voice of War by Zach Argyle. And I absolutely adored this book. It was very, very... Uh, it pulled very similar elements. Like, uh, I love Dragonlance, and they've got, like, a city in the trees. Solus. Well, the Fair and Wild has its own city um, with the Zara people in it. It's got a magic system similar, but very different at the same time, to Alamancy from Mistborn. I really, really like that. Instead of having, like, six powers, there's only two, and it's in the blood instead of... Yeah. 
But um, it, it was just really good um, introduction of Chroma Wolves, great relationships, great characters, and a story that like kept getting gut reactions from me, and then those reactions got resolved as I read the book. I really, really love what Zach was able to do here, and I, I'm just super, super happy to have read it. But these are the top 10 books out of the 25 books that I read in the last three months. I do have two honorable mentions here because I wanted to have a couple four-star reads in there. Just a series that I thought were super good and I'm hoping get better because, frankly, these two books got me to buy a whole bunch of more books within their series. The first one was the channel read-along for, I think, May? May or April? I, I don't remember. But that's going to be David Gimmel's Legend. This this book was, A, just look at the cover. It's got Scottish um, Sean Connery on the cover right there. Looking at awesome. As always, even though he wields an axe and not a sword. So there's a cover critique right there. This is a solid four out of five for me. The only issue I had with this is it was too short. Um, I felt like certain aspects of this needed fleshing out. Uh, certain resolutions, like literally you would get a prophecy, prophecy resolves next page. I didn't love that aspect, but I loved the siege. I loved the military tactics. I loved the humanity that you really get to discover through those siege tactics. Really, you get to see what it means to face adversity and almost certain defeat and how you're going to react to it. I absolutely loved Legend. So that's an honorable mention. And then my next honorable mention, which is another four out of five, is going to be Leviathan Wakes. I think the only sci-fi to make the list, and again, the reason it's a four out of five is because they put a stupid sticker. I'm just kidding. No, that's not it. <laughs> uh, my issue here is I felt because it's a dual author book, Jane Jessica Corey being Ty Frank and um, Daniel Abraham, I don't think they've quite found their groove here yet. The dialogue is a bit choppy between chapters. And, like, literally, it'll be like, Holden said, Miller said. Holden said, Miller said. Holden said, Miller said. And it's just not very, it's not well thought out, or the, the dialogue could definitely be delivered better. And then also I felt like the world, or the universe and galaxy that we're being given feels very 21st century. It doesn't really feel futuristic. There's not a lot of cultural references from the future, uh, they tend to harken back to our cultural references. Like, they keep talking about Don Coyote, even though, like, Don Coyote at this point is, like, a book that's, like, five to seven hundred years old. Like, why wouldn't you... Like, they, they mentioned tint tilting at windmills, but they're on, like, an asteroid in the middle of space. Like, come up... Make up a better reference is, is kind of my critique there. Like, I didn't mind you mentioning Don Quixote, but constantly... Like, he comes up, like, three or four times. I don't know. I had issues with it. And then I had issues with, like, there was a big, like, cheese gag in there about real cheese from Earth and how expensive it is. But then they're, like, slinging back bourbon on a space station, but there's with no reference to cost, even though uh, I know I, I, I'm a bit of a bourbon snob, and I like the modern bourbon definition. It has to be made in the U.S. So, technically, if... Cheese has to come, if real cheese comes from Earth, so does real bourbon. And it's never differentiated. They, it feels like they just used the cheese gag, but then ignore the bourbon. And that, that kind of, that, it's just a little critique thing that bugged me. That said, great series. I already have the first five books. And of uh, Legend, I've got the first seven. So I'm, I'm in Dranai. This is Expanse. This is Dranai. Yes. But that said, guys, that is my top ten list for Q2 2021. Please let me know what you thought of my picks. Uh, what were some of your picks? What were your top 10? Um, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you just want to tell me in the Discord, make sure to check the description down below for the link to the Wizzly Duo Discord. We're an ever-growing community, and we would love to have you. That's it, guys. Till next time, peace out. Stay magical. Bye.